What's up, everybody? Hey, if you can't have a little fun right now, then when can you? This was this was just last minute. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna throw in a little hip hop, huh? I'm a little. Uh, I love me some guitar, but it was time to throw in some hip hop and just dance. I do love me some dancing. I will tell you right now that once upon a time in college. I could bust a groove on the on the dance floor. Bad hip and knees later. A few uh, tours uh, across the world. And the body don't move like it used to. So, tonight we have an incredible, an incredible taste off. We have, uh, we have Four Roses Limited Edition 2004. Russell's Reserve, kind of like a people's champion. Russell's Reserve, 10-year-old, you can find that. And then one of the harder-to-get bottles right now, E.H. Taylor 4 Grain. Now, we have a, a lot to go through today. And before I get into all the whiskey stuff, I want to talk a little bit about some things that I have going on. This... Today, uh, I had my uh, interview with David Byrne, the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Grammy Award winner, Academy Award winner, winner, just incredible, incredible dude. Uh, go check that out. But you can also see the video right here on YouTube, and you can see, just full clarification, I look like the Stay Puft Man. I got this horrible salmon jacket that's like swallowing me, pants that are too big, and muddy boots. And here's why. Bourbon and Beyond rained out and I was covered in mud and I had to change. And those were the only clothes I had left that were not crazy, like muddy and stuff. So uh, go in there and have a good laugh at how I look because I look absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous. But hey, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I had to do what I had to do and I looked silly. So uh, also, yesterday we had the Bottled and Bond Blue Label Throwdown, Early Times versus George Dickel Bottled and Bond. Go check out that video if you haven't. Uh, here's a hint, the one with the Blue Label one. Now, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, I have, um, we're going to see the final interview with Dave Pickerel. Now, this is already available on Amazon Prime, on Bourbon Up. I'm going to be streaming those, putting those on YouTube throughout um, basically once a week. I'll put one of the episodes on YouTube. And season two will be coming out here pretty soon. This is a uh, this is a really, really important interview for my career, I think, for whiskey. 
Uh, and really, it, it's a chance to remember a great man in Dave Pickerel. Now, let's take a look at what we have, what we have today to taste. I have actually never given a score to uh, Russell's Reserve 10-year-old. However, I have consumed my fair share of it, and I know it quite well. Uh, I did give it a very, uh, you know, generous review in uh, my book, Bourbon Curious. So if you haven't checked that out yet, um, you should definitely go check it out. One thing I want to mention about, about Russell's Reserve and some of the more aged wild turkey products is that they almost always have a... They almost always have like a like a chili note in there. It, it, sometimes it's like a red chili note. Sometimes it's like a hatch chili. Uh, sometimes it's um, you know kind of a green chili. But there's always a very unique chili note in there. So I am very excited about the first time I have opened this bottle. So this is a fresh bottle. And get this, I have never actually reviewed or written thorough tasting notes on E.H. Taylor four grain. Now I did the Amherst four grain, which was the ancient grain that everybody went all hog wild over. I was like, eh, it's okay, you know? But uh, this is a bottle that people, you know, kind of chase, they look for it and everything. I'm not really swayed by those things, uh, but generally anything that's north of eight years old coming out of Buffalo Trace, which this is, is usually pretty, pretty, pretty damn good. So this will be a fun taste to have. And now I did actually taste and like the um, the Four Roses 2014 bottle. Now, before I show you, uh, I reviewed this on YouTube uh, previously last year, about a year ago actually, and we're going to go to that in a second. But I, I want to tell you about this bottle. See, they told us that they were taking uh, the single barrel limited edition off of the market. And that this was supposed to be like the last uh, release of that. And so when this came out, when they had made that announcement, I bought like a case thinking that it was uh, going to be special and I would never be able to get my hands on it again. And of course, they came out with an, another year. So, in the classic "don't trust the marketing of of, of whiskey distillers," uh, the 2014 uh, single barrel limited edition was not indeed the last single barrel limited edition. But I happen to like it nonetheless. And let's take a look at that video of me tasting it last year. Um. This is excellent. Long. Okay. Thing. All right. Before. All right. Wait. Look. Look at this guy. All right. I mean, can he put the lights on him any any brighter? For God's sake. I mean, you looks like a, a UFO lights coming in on him. All right. That's me. Horrible setup at the time, but you know, it's taking some tinkering to get to get the lighting right. Also, bad ascot combo. I don't use that ascot shirt combo anymore. Not that you cared. Very long finish with um, its most prominent note, cinnamon, coming forward. So, quick note, I always have found that Four Roses' most prominent note has always been cinnamon. When uh, Brent Elliott came on board, we started seeing some other notes shine out just a little bit more. That's why I think Brent is a, a, is a incredible, incredible um, uh, distiller. He's able to like fine tune and get the special notes out of Four Roses. This is a fantastic bourbon highly recommend it there's no way you can find it because i think you see that watch there that was like the only watch that i had brought back into my life and it didn't last very long you can go to instagram to find out the watch story if you don't know it already i and five other people bought all the bottles but it's um about to me it's probably even 92 point 92 point bourbon so four roses uh, 2014 single barrel, 92 points. So for me, 92 points is actually pretty high. Uh, I know that, you know, there's a, you know, my grading curve is like, you know, I look at it as like, um, like school. Um, 
you know, if you get a D, you know, you might graduate, but you're not getting accepted into a state school. If you get a C, you might get accepted into a state school, uh, but a C would be like in the 70s. It's drinkable, but, you know, not choosing it over Evan Williams' black label, if you will. If it's uh, a B, you're going to be a, a little bit more, um, you're going to be a little bit more like accepted into school, but it's still not an A. An A for me is in the 90s. And those 90s, like every single point after 90, you know, it kind of it kind of grades up. So um, not a lot of 92s I've given. So let's get to the tasting. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should go with some some questions before we get down. Uh, get into. I want to see. Looks like people like the um, like the song, like the dancing. You know, like I said at the top, if you can't dance right now. I just feel like we need we need to break up the seriousness in some ways. We need to have some fun. We need to joke around a little bit, but we also not need to, we don't need to be mean to each other. Like I think you know people always think a comedy is making fun of someone. No, you don't have to make fun of someone to have a have a good laugh. I mean that's to me that's weak comedy. Comedy is when you take a situation and you make it better by doing something silly and you know not hurting anybody's feelings. The only person's feelings who got hurt there was. Probably my my wife probably embarrassed watching this, thinking, "Oh my God, is he really doing this?" Oh God, I can't go out in public with him anymore. Uh, so let's see if we have um, if we have any any questions here. Uh, Jason Day says, "What's new, Fred?" Jason, it's good to see you. Uh, hope you're doing well, doing great, Jason. Thanks for asking. Family's good. Um, you know, work is obviously good. You know. I can't believe I can call this work, but it is. Uh, Caleb says, that was mesmerizing. Why, thank you, Caleb. I've been uh, working on that little number for about 35 seconds before the show, so I'm glad you liked it. Put a lot of work into it. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Uh, Clinton Kincaid says, he said this at the top of when I was talking about my dance moves. He's saying the joints, he understands the joints hurting. That's serious stuff, folks. Serious stuff. Um, Ron's Wood Turning Shop. Hey, all right. Ron's Wood Turning Shop. I'm curious. Like, is this I, what I'm finding myself wanting to do in my spare time? I'm wanting to, like, work with wood. and But I can't go to, like, uh, I, I can't go to Lowe's and get wood or anything. So is there, like, a good place to get wood that they'll deliver it to you or something right now? I'm curious about that. Also, something else I want to know. You guys tell me, uh, are there any gamers here? And would you be, would you, would you, um, I'm thinking about like starting, like, you know, playing some games and getting back into it. The last time I did games, uh, I played, um, um, I so said, Fred, you might want to move your camera to the right. The comments pop up on it. Okay, all right. Uh, the I have been uh, wanting to get back into playing, you know, video games. But when I, because of this like isolation thing, and I'm curious if any of you all play games because I'm always worried that I'm going to go down the rabbit hole, and now I won't have anybody to play with. So if there's anybody out there in like any kind of like uh, uh, multi gaming systems right now that you can get on, you know. Hit me up. I wouldn't mind playing, but I got to get the right stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. TikTok videos. Everybody's wanting me to do TikTok videos now. Okay. All right. Let's get to that. Let's get to the tasting. Oh, we're starting with uh, E.H. Taylor. Ironically, it's in the Four Roses glass. Uh, that was not intentional. So this is uh, corn, wheat, rye, and barley. And this is, uh, as I recall, 12 years old and is a, um, is a really, I'm just smelling it, and it's like, holy smokes, this has got some intensity to it. This has like all those kind of like special little uh, sweet notes that you're hoping to find. It is all right there. 
Hmm. Mac Dane's asking me what games I'm into. I'm a sports guy. So I was really big into Tiger Woods golf. I was always big into John Madden. And back in college, I was the king of Super Mario Kart, which, you know, old Nintendo 64. Probably dating myself there, but saw my son playing it at, at uh, daycare a while back. Oh, yeah, that's just right up on there. That this nose is a caramel bomb. That's a caramel bomb just right all up in that in that nose. Just boom back and forth. Boom, 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 boom. All caramel all day. Mm. Oh man. Oh boy. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. 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 Folks, this is heavenly. This is absolutely heavenly. And when this came out in 2017, I did not write a review on it. Um, I have tasted it blind in competition. I've enjoyed it, um, you know, with a cigar, but I've never analytically studied it. And the way this hits the palate, the way that E.H. Taylor bottled and bond hits the palate, it's like a velvet glove coming into the tongue and just like grabbing a hold of it. Butter just ripping down that jawline. Little pieces of caramel, cinnamon, chocolate, um, raisin bread, dried apricot. It this thing is complex. This is this is a sip and whiskey that. Mm, 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 mm. You know, Steve, you're right about that. You're right. I almost was tearing up. Mm. Mm -mm. I I don't want to. I don't want to go. This is like. I feel like I'm um. I'm in a relationship right now, and I have to go somewhere. Like I have to go on a business trip, or I have to get sent away in the military. I want to keep tasting this, but I got more to do tonight. So now we're going to go to the Four Roses 2014. Now, you might ask, why the hell did you pick these three random bottles? To be honest with you, that would be a good thing to ask. Because there's not, I mean, I guess there are some similarities there. But here's what's going on right now. I'm trying to have these these tastings every single night to, you know, keep me entertained, hang out with you guys, bring the whiskey community together and, you know, talk a little business to one another. And I just grabbed these three bottles. And I was like, yeah, you know what? This will be a fun tasting. But these, these tastings, this is how they're going to go. I'm just going to grab stuff out of my office or my home, and I'm going to taste them. That's basically going to be it. And they're all going to be in this kind of like versus thing. Because I do believe that at the end of the day, we do have to make a choice. Are we buying that one or are we buying that one? And right now, I can tell you, no matter what, I'm buying this one. I may end up liking something more, but I'm still buying it. Okay, to the four roses. Mm, yeah, cinnamon, man. Oh, boy, that cinnamon, that big red gum cinnamon smell. Or maybe it's a, a pack of cinnamon toothpicks before you, you pop them in there before you go to a baseball game. And then underneath that, some, uh, some nice rye muffin, 
like a nice rye muffin just coming fresh out of the oven. Oh, hot damn. Hot damn, that's good. Mm. Folks, this is going to be a tough night. This is going to be a tough night for me. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. That is so friggin' good. It's a spice bomb. It is an absolutely a spice bomb with just underneath that a cadre of like sweetness, but like custard sweet. So there's still a little bit of tartness to it. And and then there's like uh, some citrus. This right here, although I think I'm out, I think this might be my last bottle of it. Um, this right here, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Joe Francis, you, sir, get a sticker. This man knows my, he's been reading my work and hearing me talk. So, Joel, send me a, send me your address. Uh, go to fredminnick.com and click contact and send me your address and I will mail you a sticker. Uh, this right here, the Fred Minnick Show sticker. That, my friends, look at that. He knows my language. Now, I've, now I'm not going to use uh, cadre for the rest of the night because I'll be sensitive to it. But good pick. Okay, so here we go. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the underdog for tonight's card. It is an everyday bourbon, uh, quite tasty, 10 years old, and under $30 for, for the most part. You can go to some markets and it'll be a silly markup, but it's usually under $30. Oh yeah, it's got that nice patented wild turkey smell. You got you got uh you got some sweetness there, you got some funk. Who's got the funk? Wild turkey's got the funk. It's got that wild turkey funk. Mmm. Makes me want to get all up in it. Mmm. I totally dig this nose. This this nose has, it has like this incredible, like earthiness to it. Like you're walking out into a field, a nice cold breeze comes through, and you smell you smell the floral, you smell the oak, you smell the the richness of the earth, and you smell that kind of like natural sweetness that can be in the air in some places, and on a cold day with the right breeze in Kentucky, you can smell a mash being cooked, and I get that smell. This right here is fantastic. Oh boy, oh boy. Everybody, we got a three whiskey showdown. Yes, we do. Mm, 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 mm. This Russell's Reserve is just loading my palate with flavor. It's touching every single inch of my tongue from the tip to the back to the sides to the top and just ease and spice right in there. There is no wrong pick tonight. I can tell you that right now. There is no wrong pick tonight. All three of these are fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Mm, 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 mm. Now that I have the first taste in, why don't I go ahead and look through here and um, answer some questions. Uh First, let me let me approach. Everyone keeps keeps bringing up that this is thirty dollars. Okay, yes. And if you are not re regularly buying Russell's Reserve ten year old, then there is something going on uh, that's keeping you from doing it. Because this is a amazing, amazing bourbon for thirty bucks. 
you can, and, it's, and it's available in most markets. I mean, you can walk into a store. Well, may, maybe not now. You have to go do the delivery thing. But you should be buying this. It's incredible for the money. Incredible bang for your buck. So I, I do hope that if if you are not buying this now, you do you do later. Uh, Daniel Brown brings up the fact that this is this is uh, thirty eight dollars in Oregon. It just it goes to show you that you know these things change per market, and you're inevitably going to have one asshole liquor store who says. Well, I heard Russell's Reserve 10-year-old's doing well now, so let's go ahead and mark it on up to $55. And and then it'll get marked up $55. So it is what it is. Unfortunately, we can't control that. Um, yeah. Uh, Joel comes back and says, I've heard some say that uh, Russell's Reserve 10-year-old tastes like dill pickles. Nonsense. Now, I wonder if they're talking about the rye uh, from Russell's Reserve, because, you know, that might not be a bad categorization because rye does have um, does actually have, you know, deal notes in it. So. Um, OK. It's time. I didn't see any questions here, just mostly comments. But if you do have a question in here, please let me know. I will be happy, um, happy to take or answer that for you. I won't taste your question. I will try to answer it for you. If you haven't already, please make sure you click that subscribe button. Everybody, I'm trying to do a lot of this like video content, live streaming. Uh, I'm doing tastings every weeknight at nine o'clock. And I've got content coming during the day. I've got my podcast dropping on Friday. So make sure that you are checking all that out. But it doesn't happen unless you click that subscribe button and the little bell, which is which is a reminder. And I am, you know, I'm full throttle here. Uh, the only thing that can I feel can like hold me up from from this stuff is is the thing that we're all facing and dealing with. And today, um, you know, I had to be I had to be at home with the kids. And most days I have uh, someone who can come and watch them. And today uh, they were not able to come. And my wife, there's no way that she can take away. She's she works at a hospital. Bless her heart. They're uh, they're definitely going through a lot. Um, so here we go. Boy. I tell you what, I, I'm just coming back to the C.H. Taylor bottle and bond. Man, four grain. This is everything that's right in the world. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh. This is, mm, 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 this is so good. This is so good. Son of a gun. I think I've had what they call a mouth chasm. Oh, oh, that is amazing. Coming coming into uh, four roses. Oh man, son of a bitch! This is hard. I don't think people realize like. This is going to be hard. Like most of these tastings have been pretty one-sided, pretty easy for me to pick. But I mean, this is this is um you know, this is Barry Sanders. You know, this is Barry Sanders, like the one of the most beautiful running backs of all time. He could go this way, that way. He could go over here, over there. Just like so so elegant, so just 
amazing. And also he went to Oklahoma State. And then this, this is like Walter Payton. You know what? He can catch a screen pass. He'll run you over. He'll block for you. It's like he can do everything. And this, we're going to see. We're going to see what Russell's reserve is. What, what uh, who that reminds me of. Mm, God, it's just so earthy. Mm. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm. So, Russell's reserve is uh, is John Riggins, the great Washington Redskin running back. He was kind of a he was just a bulldozer, you know. He didn't have a lot of left and right in him, but he had a stiff arm. You got in the way, you felt the stiff arm. And so if I'm comparing these to running backs in the National Football League, which I love, these are all Hall of Famers. These are all fantastic pours that you want when you're in a certain mood. Well, Joseph, Joseph asked a very important question here. What in the hell is going on here? And, you know, I'm just a man trying to pick a whiskey. That's all I'm trying to do. And this is uh, this is very difficult. Very, very difficult. All right, so what I just did there, I did a, a, a countdown for how long the finish is. Basically, I am telling you in a nose and tasting perspective, in a very, if they're almost equal, it's all, it, it's, they're all three of these are different. Like I could break these down from a flavor profile and tell you like, if you're wanting cinnamon, this is what you have. You have Four Roses uh, small batch or, or single barrel 2014. If you want cinnamon, this is what you taste. If you want caramel bomb with back end spice, then it is E.H. Taylor bottle and bond all day long. But if you want, if you want a uh, bourbon that's going to make you think as to what the note is, then it's Russell's Reserve and it's got that that chili note it's got that earthiness to it um and it has nutmeg a big nutmeg note there but this this one of all three of these russell's reserve 10 year old makes me think to break it down even more and so if you are if you are a taster that you don't like you're not patient with the whiskey you don't want to spend time with the whiskey this isn't for you like if you need to just it has to be right there and you taste it don't don't pick this one up. You this need this is for someone I would really say is a um a more of a sophisticated, you know, has more of a sophisticated palate because this one rewards somebody who understands whiskey and you can really break down the various notes that's coming in because if you're not a if, if you're not not to say that novices could not pick this up, but someone who is not patient and someone who doesn't want to learn um, you're gonna, you might taste like uh, the earth note and just drop out, and that's what I find is one of the one of the most uh, preeminent problems with people coming into whiskey. They come in and they taste a note that is that they deem a flaw when when in fact it is the style of the whiskey, and they say, "I hate that it tastes like garbage or whatever," and that's the problem. Like if you can't ex if you can't use if you can't find a better term than garbage to explain something, then Maybe don't explain it. However, if you pick up notes like puke or uh, turpentine 
or burnt plastic, those are legitimate flaw notes. Uh, saying like hot garbage, you know, that, that's a trendy term for it sucks. If you think it sucks, just say it sucks. But uh, I, f I find the four, uh, the, the four roses, the four roses is for the cinnamon fan. The um, Colonel E.H. Taylor is going to be for the person who loves complexity, but especially a caramel bomb. And uh, Russell's Reserve 10-year-old bourbon is the one for a thinker who wants to break things down in their palate. So with that said, like I said, they're all equal to me. And so from a taste and nose perspective, just in different ways. So now what I am going to do is I am going to pick based on the finish. So since the nose and the palate have been deemed equal in some way, shape, or form, uh, I am going with the finish. And the E.H. Taylor had a 27 second finish for me. 27 seconds. Uh, Four Roses, uh, single barrel, 2014, came in at 24 seconds. So right now, my leader in the clubhouse is E.H. Taylor. Now, what I have to do here is taste the uh, Russell's Reserve. Russell's Reserve 10-year-old small batch to see where it sits on my scale for a finish. Uh, before I do that, let's go ahead and uh, answer some questions here. Keep those questions coming in. And I didn't really see a lot on the gaming uh, that I asked earlier. Let me know if you are a gamer. Uh, what kind of games do you play? Jason Day from uh, Facebook asks, um, Russell Store Pick or uh, Shelf? Uh, I bought this um, Russell's Reserve at um, Westport uh, Whiskey and Wine. So this is uh, this is just a regular, everyday uh, Russell's, and I got this at uh, Westport Whiskey and Wine in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Do you have to drink every time you see the ascot? Uh, by the way, I can't believe no one has actually said anything about my ascot. I have their skulls. So these are um, these are skulls. This is like my heavy metal ascot. Has it been brought up in the comments? If so, I have not seen it. Let's see if we have any other things here. People asking. Um, a lot of gamers. Douglas Pendleton says uh, a lot of gamers are shooters or open world. Okay. Metal Alaska, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And let's see here. Wyatt Steed says uh, Four Roses, 130th or 14th single barrel. So this is the 2014 single barrel, as you can take a look there. Brad says, it's hard to see behind the microphone. You know what? I apologize. I, I need to, to work on my microphone game so you can see the ascot in all its glory. See, th these are basically, these are human skulls. So, yeah. You see like right there, you know, right there. Just zoom in, get like a, like a skull and on the backside on the brain, there's a, there's a brain on the, on the backside. Uh, Eric Carrico writes, uh, will Tool be making their own whiskey or bourbon soon? Well, 
I um, I don't know. I think that would be a good fit. We do know that Maynard picked a four row or a, a, an old force or single barrel. Maynard also makes his uh, own wine in um, he makes his own wine in Arizona. So that would be an awesome combo if you ask me. Uh, Joseph brings up a really good point here. All right, we got some problems here. Let me just shoot that down a little bit. He brings up a good point. He says, I've heard vodka sucks, but he can't remember where he heard that. Where, where did you hear vodka sucks? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, wait, I know. <laughs> vodka sucks. Um... Uh, What's the meaning behind the ascot? So Brandon Watson, which I don't know if this is, is this the same Brandon Watson I went to high school with? If so, I hope you're doing well. It's good to see you. Um, but uh, he asked, what's the meaning behind the ascots? Some uh, wear bow ties or bolos. Is that just your thing? Well, so the meaning behind the ascot is I was um, I was always a fan of like these movies when I was a kid and these these cops wore ascots and they would be running through the alleys trying to catch the bad guys and they had the elbow pads on their jackets and everything and they were the cool like like high-end cops and and they would be private detectives and um, all kinds of cool you know stately gentlemen wore ascots and the things that I watched and it didn't really occur to me like how much that really had an impact on me until I moved to Kentucky and I wanted to go, I was going to the Kentucky Derby and you know, this was a moment to dress up. This was the moment to be a, um, a person uh, of, a, of a gentleman stature, if you will. And so I would go to these clothing stores and I would ask for an ascot. And everybody would look at me and say, like, what are you, in the 1860s? It was actually kind of weird, but people were people were kind of rude when I would go to them and ask for an ascot. Um, and then um, this was at the same time I was writing about wine. And I was on a trip to, uh, I was in a trip in Italy. And there was a gentleman there by the name of Bill Marsano. Bill was like, he's like a iconic, legendary wine writer. And he was wearing ascots. Um, he was not exactly nice to me. He was kind of a curmudgeon, kind of a dick. But he loved my wife. He was like hitting on my wife constantly. And I thought he didn't like me. But when we got back from the trip, he had sent me four of his own homemade ascots. And that was, um, that was kind of like my kickoff. So I started wearing ascots more and more and more. And um, and I found places to get them. And whenever I traveled, I would go into like the clothing stores in Europe. They're everywhere uh, in the United States. You don't find them very often. But wherever I went, I would look for ascots. Some people would hunt for, you know, whiskeys, which I did, too. But I well, I was looking for ascots. And uh, so I would stock up and stock up. And um, yeah, so that's the that's the story for the ascot. I just I just like them. I wish. Uh, I wish I could tell you there was like more to it than that, but it's, it's, I, I like, I like ascots and they're also easy to tie. Uh, which barrel proof do I like better? This comes from Andrew, uh, the four grain or the barrel proof. Uh, right now I'm thinking that this four grain here is like, I, I'm going to go home with it. So thanks, man. Uh, and he went to Ben Davis in uh, Indianapolis. So not the Brandon Watson I went to school with. All right, guys. So here's the moment of no return for Russell's Reserve 10-year-old. Uh, as I had stated, coming down to this point in the uh, tasting process, I deemed all three of these equal in nose and palate. Now they're not the same in terms of how they taste, but they smell the, the nose, they both kind of like light up the olfactory in very different ways, but in, in a positive way. And on the palate, they all kind of hit, you know, various different points of the palate, but they hit the same amount of points and they have a lot of different flavors, but they have the same amount of flavors and the same intensity. 
So it comes down to the finish. So far, E.H. Taylor, bottled and bond, four grain, defeated the Four Roses 2014 single barrel by about three seconds on the finish. Now, I said that Four Grain had a 27 second finish. Four Roses 2014 had a 24 second finish. Now, that's just my palette. What you taste would be completely different, but I know my palette, and this one right here, the Four Grain, is in the lead. And um, we'll see if uh, Russell's Reserve can take it out. And when I'm doing that, that's my second. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the Russell's Reserve was a 20-second finish. And um, while that is a very good finish, and for $30, you're not going to find many finishes longer than that. I don't think you will find any, actually. But it did not win this tasting. While it was equal in merit coming down the stretch, if I were to score this right now, I would say this would be a 91 or a 92. I stand by the score that I gave um, the Four Roses uh, limited edition uh, single barrel uh, 2014 at 92. But today's winner is a beautiful, 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 gorgeous, gorgeous four grain bottled and bond E.H. Taylor. And... It is, um, it's hard to get for a reason. And if I were to score this right now in the moment, it would probably be a 94 to 96. I would have to taste it a couple more times just to kind of validate and confirm that. But I am pretty confident that this is in that range. And, it, and the thing is, is like, it when you get to that, when you get past... 20 seconds on a finish and you start going down and going down and going down like every second matters you know when you get in that 20 second zone for a finish uh, i have had whiskeys that you know finished for for a minute 45 seconds to a minute it's incredible some of the greatest are in that um you know four minute range but but this is uh this is exceptional whiskey absolutely exceptional so how about it for uh, Four Roses, or I'm sorry, uh, E.H. Taylor, limited edition, uh, or it's, is it limited edition? The Bottled and Bond Four Grain. <laughs> but I also think that the real winner here today is Russell's Reserve. It stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with some uh, very nice, hard-to-find, impossible to find even bourbons and this you can get every single day in your liquor store uh and it came toe to toe with these great bourbons and i'm telling you i don't i don't lie i don't make this stuff up i'm very honest about these things and if i'm going to the liquor store right now this is what i'm buying because i can find it this is absolutely excellent bourbon and in, in my opinion, it was in toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, it was eight seconds different from a finish and um, four seconds, or I'm sorry, seven seconds different on a finish for E.H. Taylor, four seconds difference on this one. And that is the degree of separation here and uh, an excellent, excellent bourbon. Now, how about we all just chat and um, mm. oh, here's a good question. We'll ask if I will shave my beard during this pandemic. My wife looked at me today and she was like, um, you need to trim your beard. And I said, baby, I don't want to touch this thing because I can't go to um, 
the young woman who trims my beard. Oh, fuck it up. Like the last time I did, like here, this is, this is a real story. Tomorrow we have the premiere with Dave Pickerel. Dave, um, Dave gave me like these incredible, like, you know, shaving tips and, and, and grooming tips on the beard. Cause our, our beards were very similar. And I just, I'm horrible about trimming my beard. Like I'll trim it. And then this side will be all wobbly and this side will be long. And then I'll have like out of nowhere will be this neck hair that's over here and you can play, play like the piccolo with it. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but I am not a good beard trimmer. I'm not. That's why I go to someone else. So I'll probably keep growing it. Uh, do I use beard oil? Yes, I do use beard oil. I do. Uh, Kurt, my boy Kurt, says, what year is the Kentucky Tavern behind you? Uh, bottled in 1948, distilled in 1942. It looks like we're all facing the same dilemma here. We need to shave, but... We're in this together. Maybe this can be our thing. Maybe this is, maybe the beard is like, is our power through all of this. Yes, it gets more germs on it, but it makes us feel better. It makes us feel good about who we are. You take our beards away, maybe we feel like less of a man. Mm, maybe that's not good. Brian Mackey's asking me my thoughts on down home bourbon. Um, man, I get a lot of things in my office. I get a lot of things sent to me. I do not recall having down home bourbon, but you're always welcome to go to like my YouTube or wherever and just search that. Um, but I don't know. I don't think I've tasted that. So I don't, I don't think I have uh, any comments for you there. Why, thank you, Ricardio Head. Ricardio Head, thank you. I do feel more handsome with a beard. I'm I'm letting this I'm kind of letting it go. I'm I'm letting my letting my beard just flow. Kurt's coming back. When you start looking like popcorn sutton, I'll get worried. Listen. Kurt, you and I are both military men. You're still clean shaven, but I feel like I lost my 20s with my beard. My beard is like saying it's time to recoup those days when um, when you had to shave like every five minutes, you know? Remember that? If you had like a like a speck of grain on your on your chin, you'd end up doing like 80 push-ups before you went in the mess hall. I, you know, I, I think that's why the beard is so important to me. I'm still rebelling from when I was in the military. Uh, Danny Mackey says, maybe off topic, but found some four square rum. $80 is that good? Well, uh, first of all, not off topic at all. We do love four square. I love four square. I can't, I can't stop talking about it. Probably better than 95% of the bourbons that are on the market. Um, let's take a look at which one that is. And the answer is probably going to be yes, but that's still high for how they price them out. But also imagine buying buying greatness before the rest of the world kind of caught up with it as being great. That's what Foursquare is. So right now it's not priced very high, but in 10, 15 years, you could look back on this moment and say, wow, I skipped out on the 2004 bottle because it was 80 bucks. You know, I mean, in 10, 15 years, I mean, who knows what that could be. Ah, Thomas, thanks for joining us here, man. Uh, you're in Augustine Beach? I'm jealous. Best three bottles to buy for a new collection. Great question. Okay, now I'm going to come back to you, Thomas, and ask this question. What 
or um, what do you have? You know, it, do you have a basic collection or are you looking to like really kind of like build it up? And I give advice on, on the caveat that you must drink it. Like this is not to collect and sit around. Like I want you to sip this, you know? I mean, if you have a thousand bottles in your house and they're all unopened, what good do they do? They're meant to sip. Unfortunately, we can't sip them with friends right now, but they are meant to sip, maybe virtually. So if I was starting a collection uh, or something to sip at home, I would definitely, what I would do is I would break it up by styles. So let's start with Four Roses. You've got to go with a uh, Four Roses single barrel or small batch. I would recommend single barrel. It's 100 proof. It's always going to be the V yeast. The V yeast is, you know, its most basic, um, you know, ubiquitous style of yeast. But that is a really, really good whiskey. And you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. So you start with the Four Roses single barrel. From there, you go with a, uh, a weeded bourbon. Now, listen, you don't have a lot of access to weeded bourbons. The really great weeded bourbons are really hard to get, really hard, really expensive. But, and I don't care what anybody says, but Maker's Mark is a very good bourbon, especially for the money. So you add that to the collection and you have a style that's night and day from Four Roses. And then you go to something that has kind of like a basic amount of rye. Uh, more of a traditional mash bill, if you will. And from there, you can go Knob Creek, you could go uh, Wild Turkey, you could go Woodford Reserve. Uh, so any of those three will do, will do the trick. But I'm gonna add a fourth bottle to you that will help you kind of like, you know, study the various styles in whiskey. And that'll be Angel's Envy. This is a new age bottle. It's a new age style of bourbon. Some would say it's controversial. I would probably be in that league that would say that I would like to see the labels change. I don't like I don't like these port finishes and sherry finishes and all that and them still being considered bourbon. The the Legion bottle that came from uh, Jim Beam, for example, I hated that. I hated the labeling. I didn't like the whiskey. And it was a blend, and they were calling it Japanese bourbon. And you know what? Some of the uh, some of the reporters writing about it took it too far. But at the end of the day, I did not like that bottle. So, nonetheless, that category is here to stay, and I think it's important to study it. And Angel's Envy, uh, basic everyday Angel's Envy, is a really really good bottle. So I basically gave you seven bottles there to choose from for your three. So I hope that helps. Uh, Zach Hall, any chances Four Roses uh, Yellow Label makes it into a tasting video? I've gotten my wife into bourbon and she loves the stuff. You know what, Zach? I'll remember that. I'll remember that. I'll get it in a video. Thank you so much for asking that. And that reminds me, what... Um, all right, hey, oh, hold on, hold on. I got to stop the presses right here, folks. Ah, that's James Guest. So I went to I went to school with a guy named Jeremy Guest, and uh, James gets a cop. It threw me off there, but he asked me what's my favorite go-to bourbon. James, I'm just gonna tell you like I tell everyone else, it's whichever one you're buying me. Oh. <laughs> uh. Uh, Brendan Hogan just asked, have I had Legion and uh, what are my thoughts? Now, I just talked about this, so you must be just now coming on. Um, I love Japanese whiskey, but I think Legion is a, um, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the labeling of it. I don't like the flavor of it. And I don't like the concept. I don't like the concept of all these various things and getting blended back together um, the way they did it. It just felt it it felt really over marketed, and the flavor of it was like I was like um, you know you know drinking um, Kool Aid or something. It was just not. It didn't taste like whiskey to me. It was I don't know. 
I don't know. I didn't like it. Uh, Will Steven asks, uh, thoughts of Wilderness Trail? I love Wilderness Trail. Uh, I love them as people, and I like their whiskey a lot. Steve says, uh, Nika from the Barrel and Yamazaki 12, so good. I agree. Listen, if there is one category that can defeat bourbon from a demand perspective, it is without a doubt Japanese whiskey. But here's the thing about Japanese whiskey, and you may not want to hear this. It's not as authentic as they make it sound to be. Japanese whiskey actually imports a lot of the distillate and ages it there, and they blend it there. And there's nothing wrong with that. I would like to see a little bit more transparency coming out of Japan. Uh, Nika, as, Nika is actually really, really good at uh, telling you everything that you need to know about you know their styles. But we don't see as much transparency as we do from American distillers. And you know what? That bothers me. Uh, Brad Dominic, Domink, oh man, almost Dominic. That's a big good name if it was. Uh, what are your thoughts on Evan Williams 1783? Uh, I'm actually very high on that. Harder to get than it used to be because they're using those stocks for other types of um, Heaven Hill products. But you can go to my book, Bourbon Curious, to find out my exact tasting notes. I don't know them off the top of my head, but I do recall liking it quite a bit. Uh, Max writes uh, from Twitter, thanks for joining. Have you tried St. George Baller's single malt? Uh, and in fact, I have. Uh, initially, I did not like it, and then I tasted it again. I liked it a little bit more, and then on the third time, I loved it. And, and this is the main reason why when I am rating, I taste things three times. Now, when I am here on the videos and I'm talking and all that, I'm not necessarily rating something. If I rate something, it's because I have tasted it three times. To give a rating, I do believe that you have to taste something three times on three different days because we are a, mo we are a moment in time when it comes to our palate. Everything that you've done before and the mood you're in it can all influence what you taste in that moment and how you would score it. So I always want to be very respectful to the whiskey. And when I first tasted Ballers, I thought it was disgusting. I thought it tasted like, you know, all kinds of raunchiness. The second time I was like, oh my gosh, I kind of get this. And the third time I loved it. And so that is one of those reasons why I do that. It's because you cannot, you cannot fall into, and, and there are a lot of people who are bad at this, and I wish it would change, but a lot of people will taste something and absolutely dismiss it just based off of one taste. Well, what if you had a, a um, sushi beforehand? What if you had like a really uh, funky fish beforehand, or you had ginger, or you had an onion, or you had a jalapeno or some some kind of milk product that threw off your belly and it impacted what you tasted. What if something like that happened? Well, then the next day you would taste something differently. So that is why you need, if you're going to be critical of something, you need to taste it three times on three different days. And that is my story of ballers. Uh, let's see. Joel Francis asks, if you like the banana notes, got to try Balcona's Baby Blue. In fact, I have, and I have found that Balcona's Baby Blue actually has a really nice oily note in there. Mm. What a great act of a group tonight. I just love this. I just feel like I feel like this whole thing, it can bring us together. This whole thing, this whole situation we're all in. We're a community. We're a community. We can come together and talk about whiskey. We can maybe talk about games. I mean, I don't know. But the the world, the world is rightfully concerned. Rightfully concerned. 
but we should not get depressed. We should not let one, one another fall in the dumps to the point where we can't socialize through the tools we have today. And we have a lot of great tools. This, I know it's whiskey. I know it's, uh, and a lot of people would say, you know what, maybe we shouldn't drink so much. We're not drinking a lot. We're just sipping. We're sipping a good whiskey, having a good, long conversation over it. I wish that I could take this camera and go outside and smoke a cigar with you, but there's a whole lot of like technological stuff that would need to happen in order for me to do that. I can't do it. Literally, cannot do it. But we are together, and I don't think we should be, you know, feeling sorry for ourselves. We're feel, feeling sorry for our society. If anything, this is a moment for us to like evaluate what is really important to our lives. And apparently cleaning the, the garage is one of them. I have to clean the garage tomorrow. I just realized that. And the basement. Okay, that, that whole thing just went off, uh, went off the rails. But it is important to clean your garage. Uh, most importantly, with this community coming together every night and, and sipping some whiskey together, I'm having a great time. You all have been amazing. I want to thank you so much for that. Um, Brian writes, I just want to say thanks for doing these videos every day. I appreciate it and look forward to it when I can, which is most of the time. Same here, man. I enjoy spending this time with you all. Um, I'd love I'd love to figure out a way to smoke a cigar, but you know, I got a high-end camera there and the internet doesn't work out there. And so we got we got that problem. I guess I can smoke inside my office. It's technically my office, but then it would smell like smoke. <laughs> Frank, you're right. Uh, responsible adulthood, clean garage and basement. <laughs> On that note, folks, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, just a reminder, we do have... Um, uh, let's find it here. We do have the premiere of uh, the Bourbon Up show that I had on Amazon Prime, the last interview with the great Dave Pickerel. And tonight's tasting somewhat apropos because we tasted E.H. Taylor. Um, Dave was related to E.H. Taylor, and um, he talked about that a little bit and what he wanted his legacy to be. And so I do hope that you join tomorrow morning, nine o'clock, I think. I think it's nine o'clock. If not, I'm going to set it to nine o'clock. But nine o'clock and we can uh, drink some coffee and hear our kids shouting in the background. I hope you'll join me. But just remember, as we're going through this, as we are suffering through the isolation, as we are fearing the absolute worst of what's to come and Gearing, collecting all the toilet paper, ammo, and meat, or whatever that we can. Just remember that we have a place we can come to every single night. That's right here at 9 o'clock p.m. Tell your friends, even if they don't drink whiskey, let them get in the comment section. Let's just have some fun. Let's, let's talk. Let's talk it up. And who knows, maybe I'll start doing more dancing. So... Thank you so much for joining me. And remember, throughout all of this, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers.